say goodbye to what we had the good time that made us laugh I'll wake the bad I thought we'd get to see forever but forever has gone away it's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday that's right it really is and I want to say rest in power to my brother, my man, Louis Gossett Jr., the first black man to win a supporting actor Oscar and an Emmy for his role in the <laughs> seminal TV series Roots. He died. He was 87. He, oh, he made his transition. Gossett's first cousin, Neil L. Gossett, told the Associated Press that the actor died in Santa Monica, California. He loved him from California. A statement from the family said, Gossett died this morning and no cause of death was revealed. Gossett's cousin remembered a man who walked with Nelson Mandela and who also was a great storyteller, a relative who faced and fought racism with dignity and honor. Never mind the awards, never mind the glitz and glamour, the Rolls Royces, the big houses in Malibu. It's about the humanity of the people that he stood for said his cousin. Lewis Gossett always thought of his early career as a reverse Cinderella story, with success finding him from an early age and propelling him forward. And that was towards his Academy Award for an officer and a gentleman. I'm sure that's one a lot of y'all remember with Richard Gere, Deborah Winger, I believe. Um, it was a pretty good movie, but he broke through the small on a small screen with as a role of Fiddler. Woo! And every time I think of uh, Roots, the most po one of the most powerful scenes was Levar Burton getting beat, and. Uh, Lou looking at him because he knew he was in trouble and when he broke them chains and he said oh you got to go now you got to run you got to run and he was like what you got to run now because you know he broke the chain and Fitler knew he was going to get in trouble anyway for letting him get him loose but he couldn't let him stay in that uh, barn with a broken ankle shackle. Oh, man, that was a deep, powerful, just a powerful scene. Um, and when he got whipped, and Lewis said, I don't care what they call you, because his name was Kuta, and the, the overseer was whipping him to make him say that his name was Toby. Your name is Toby. And he said, what's your name? Kuta. Kuta Kente. Ah. What's your name? And every lick that he took, Oscar Lewis, the fiddler, he felt every blow. And tears just streamed down his eyes. And he was like, because he couldn't understand 
what was with this African that he wouldn't give Africa up. And that's because gossip was uh, born on American soil. And a lot of people don't only look at all the metaphors and all the, just look uh, at the scenes, behind the scenes in that powerful, powerful statement. He said, must be something to be free. Must be something. You keep running your ass away. You getting the skin beat off your damn back. And you got the nerve to say, I'm still, it's so hard for you to say, I'm Toby. And that's what I feel like when I look at that statement that from Harriet Tubman. I freed hundreds of slaves, could have freed hundreds more had they only known they were slaves. It's a powerful statement. Anyway, Oscar beca- I mean, Gossett became the third black Oscar nominee and supporting actor in 1983. He won for his performance as an intimidating Marine drills instructor and an officer and a gentleman. (laughs) It's a great movie. Just great. Great movie. He also won a Golden Globe uh, for the same role. More than anything, it was a huge affirmation of my position as a black actor, he wrote in in the 2010 memoir. An actor and a gentleman. He had earned his first acting credit in his Brooklyn High School's production of "You Can't Take It With You" while he sidelined, uh, while he was sidelined from basketball with a team, with uh, from the team with an in- injury. He said, "And I was hooked, and so was my audience." His English teacher urged him to go into Manhattan to try out for. Take a giant step. He got the part and made his Broadway debut in 1953 at age of 16. Wow. I knew too little to be nervous, Gossett wrote. In retrospect, I should have been scared to death as I walked into that stage, but I wasn't. Gossett attended New York University on a basketball and drama scholarship. He was soon acting and singing on TV shows hosted by David Susskind. A lot of y'all remember him and uh, Ed Sullivan, Red Buttons, Merv Griffin. These were all, um, I guess, the Jimmy Kimball's Kimmel's of their day. Um. All the old talk show hosts. So he made his round. Steve Allen. Gossip became friendly with James Dean and studied acting with Marilyn Monroe, Martin Landau, and Steve McQueen at an offshoot of the actor's studio taught by Frank Silvera. In 1959, Gossip received critical acclaim for his role in a Broadway production of A Raisin in the Sun, along with Sidney Poitier, Ruby D, and Diana Sands. He went on to become a star on Broadway, replacing Billy Daniels in Golden Boy with Sammy Davis Jr. in 1964. Racism, L.A. style. Gossett went to Hollywood for the first time in 1961 to make the film version of A Raisin in the Sun. He had bitter memories of that trip, staying in a cockroach-infested motel that was one of the few places that was allowed for black people. In 1968, he returned to Hollywood for a major role in Companions in Nightmare, the NBC's first made-for-TV movie that starred Melvin Douglas, Ann Baxter, and uh, Patrick O'Neill. This time, Gossip was booked into the Beverly Hills Hotel, and Universal Studios had rented him a Corvette. Driving back to the hotel after picking up the car, he was stopped by a Los Angeles County Sheriff officer who ordered him to turn down the radio and put the car's roof up. 
before letting him go. Within minutes, he was stopped by eight sheriff officers who had him lean against the car, made him open the trunk while they called the car rental agency before letting him go. Though I understood that I had no choice but to put up with this abuse, it was just a terrible way to be treated, a humiliating way to feel, Gossett wrote in his memoir. I realized this was happening because I was black and had been showing off in, with this fancy car, which, in their view, I had no right to be driving. You know, it's funny to me that you still have, have black people try to defend racism, you know, um, and how it's just not an event, it's a system. And it, it amazes me. So you got people in the 50s and the 40s and the 30s saying the same shit people in the year 2024 says. And the only thing the dominant society can say, well, you got money. <laughs> look at look at the millionaires you got now. Yeah. Look at look at the good house Negroes. But what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? It's just insane. Anyway, after dinner at the hotel, he went for a walk and was stopped by a block away by a police officer who told him he had broke the law prohibiting walking around residential Beverly Hills after 9 p.m. Two other, sir, two other officers arrived and Gossett said he was chained to a tree and handcuffed for three hours. He was eventually freed when the original police car had returned. Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, now I had come face to face with racism, and it was an ugly sight, he wrote. But it was not going to destroy me. In the late 1990s, Goose Gossett said he was pulled over by police on the Pacific Coast Highway while driving his restored 1996, um, 1986, I'm sorry, Rolls Royce Corniche, Corniche 2. Corniche 2. The officer told him he looked like someone they were searching for, but the officer recognized Gossett and left. He founded the Erat Eraticism Foundation to help create a world where racism doesn't exist. I mean, everybody got their own way of doing things. You know. Gossip made a series of guest appearances on shows such as Bonanza, the Rockford Files, The Miles Squad, McLeod, Richard Pryor. I mean, a memorable turn with uh, Richard Pryor on the Partridge family. Now, that I don't remember. I don't remember that one. I'm sure that was hella crazy. In August 1969, Gossett had been partying with members of the Mamas and the Papas when they were invited to actor Sharon Tate's house. He headed home first to shower and change clothes. As he was getting ready to leave, he caught a news flash on TV about Tate's murder. She and others were killed by Charles Manson's associates that night. There had to be a reason for my escaping this bullet, he wrote. Lewis Cameron Gossett was born on May 27th in 1936 in the Coney Island section of Brooklyn to Lewis Sr., a porter, and Helen, a nurse. He later added Junior to his name to honor his father. The Oscar gave me the ability of being able to choose good parts in movies like Enemy Mine. Sadat, which was one of my favorite movies. Um, Iron Eagle. 
Iron Eagle, yeah, yeah. Gossett said in Dave Carter's 2024 book, 50 Oscar Nights, he said his statue was in storage. I'm going to donate it to a library so I don't have to keep an eye on it, he said in the book. I need to be free of it. Gossett appeared in such TV movies as The Story of Satchel Paige, Backstairs at the White House, The Josephine Baker Story, for which he won another Golden Globe, and Roots Revisited. But he said winning an Oscar didn't change the fact that all his roles were supporting ones. He played an Austin and Partridge in the 2023 remake of The Color Purple. Gossett struggled with alcohol and cocaine addiction for years. After his Oscar win, he went into rehab and where he was diagnosed with toxic mold syndrome, which he attributed to his house in Malibu. In 2010, Gossett announced that he had prostate cancer, which he said was caught in early stages. In 2020, he was hospitalized for COVID. He is also survived by sons, Sadie, a producer-director from his second marriage, and Sharon, a chef whom he adopted after seeing the seven-year-old in a TV segment on children in desperate situations. His first cousin is actor Robert Gossett. Gossett's first marriage to Hattie Glasgow was annulled. His second to Christina Mangelson ended in divorce in 1975, as did his third wife to actor Cindy James Reese in 1992. Rest in power. Rest in power, Lou. Well done. I can hear God say, my good and faithful servant. You got the most out of the talent that I gave you. And you shared it with the world. Rest in power, brother. And with that being said, y'all, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share my channel. And I will see you in the next video.